Self-realization. What are we doing? Dressed in these clothes, with this mark on our face. What does it all mean? It means that we're on the path of self-realization. What does that mean? What happens when you get self-realized? What changes? Many people believe that Self-realization means that you lose your personality, you merge into universal consciousness. In the Vedic scriptures, which are the prime <coughs> source of knowledge about self-realization, that is one kind of self-realization that is described, how one can merge into the universal, impersonal, absolute. But there are other stages also which are not impersonal but extremely personal. That means we revive our relationship with this supreme personality of Godhead who is known as Krishna, the all-attractive person. So if you're wondering what will you do after self-realization? What happens? Well, you can have a lot of fun. Not the petty fun of this material world, but being very happy, for instance, playing with Krishna. I'm going to read a short description from Srila Prabhupada's Krishna book. This is a translation of a work that was composed 5,000 years ago in Sanskrit language and is a description of the eternal spiritual world where there are many wonderful, joyful, blissful activities always going on with Krishna, who is this supremely attractive person with his cows. So here's a Two paragraph description. Once the Lord, Krishna, desired to go early, early in the morning with all his cowherd boyfriends to the forest, where they were to assemble together and take lunch. As soon as he got up from bed, he blew his buffalo horn bugle and called all his friends together. Keeping the calves before them, they started for the forest in a great procession. In this way, Lord Krishna assembled thousands of his boyfriends. They were each equipped with a stick, flute, and horn, as well as a lunch bag, and each of them was taking care of thousands of calves. All the boys appeared very jolly and happy in that excursion. Each and every one of them, including Krishna, was attentive to his personal calves as he herded them in the different places in the forest. The boys were fully decorated with various kinds of golden ornaments, yet out of sporting propensities, they began to pick up flowers, leaves, twigs, peacock feathers, and red clay from different places in the forest and further decorate themselves in different ways. While passing through the forest, one boy stole another boy's lunch package and passed it to a third. And when the boy whose lunch packet was stolen came to know of it, he tried to take it back. But the boy who had, but the boy who had it threw it to another boy. This sportive playing went on amongst the boys as childhood pastimes. When Lord Krishna went ahead to a distant place in order to, to see some specific scenery, the boys behind him ran to try to catch up and be the first to touch him. So there was a great competition. One would say, I will go there and touch Krishna. And another would say, oh, you cannot go. I'll touch Krishna first. Some of them played on their flutes or vibrated bugles made of buffalo horn. Some, some of them gladly followed the peacocks and imitated the onomatopoeic sounds of the cuckoo. 
In other words, they made the sound cuckoo, cuckoo. <laughs> While the birds were flying in the sky, the boys ran after the bird shadows along the ground and tried to follow their, their exact courses. Some of them went to the monkeys and silently sat down by them, and some of them imitated the dancing of the peacocks. Some of them caught monkeys by the tail and played with them, and when the monkeys jumped into a tree, the boys followed. When a monkey showed its face and teeth, a boy imitated and showed his teeth to the monkey. Some of the boys played with the frogs on the bank of the Yamuna, and when out of fear the frogs jumped into the water, the boys immediately dove in after them, and they would come out of the water when they saw their own shadows and stand imitating, making caricatures and laughing. They would also go to an empty well and make loud sounds, and when the echo came back, they would call it ill names and laugh. So there you are, self-realization. We imagine the path of self-realization. We do deep meditation, become detached from everything in this world. It's a very uh, <clears throat> serious process. Well. That's true. There's another path of self-realization, which is by chanting Hare Krishna. It's also very serious, but it's very joyful. And we can imagine self-realization as merging into some light, but there are other things to do in self-realization. Playing with Krishna, stealing the lunch boxes of your friends in jest, Making monkey faces. So there you go. Self-realization. When you become self-realized, you can make monkey faces. Playing with Krishna. Everything good in this world is a reflection of the goodness of Krishna's joyful pastimes. Let's go there. Chant Hare Krishna and go to the spiritual world to live eternally with Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God. Hare Krishna.